Hello watch lovers, you know what time it is. Today with me is Hilda. Hi guys. And Gavin. Good to be back again. Third week running. Haven't been thrown off the horse yet, Janilda. <laughs> Spence, what's been going on this week? BQ Watches, what's um, been happening? What can I say? Busy week. There's been a lot going on. A lot of Daytona movement. A lot of different, unusual pieces. A bit of vintage. Some Amigas. A whole selection. What... Janilda, what have you been seeing? Yeah, same watches. Uh, I mean, we know that the Daytonas are very popular, but I feel like we've been selling a lot of Submariners as well this week. Mm. Submariners, we're going to talk Submariners about that a little bit later. Uh, just to everybody, uh, comments are up and open. Please feel free to pop up any questions you may have for Spencer and Janilda. I'm obviously incapable of asking, answering any watch questions at mm -hmm. all. Um, so it's been quite an interesting week. And what's going on with uh, the Summer Fair? And just update everybody on where you are with numbers. Yeah, Summer Fair. I mean, numbers coming thick and fast. As you know, we're there the Friday and Saturday, 2nd, 3rd of July. I think we're now over 300. I haven't had an update from the weekend. Yeah, 300. But yeah. everyone who calls up who's selling a saint, he's saying they book, they're coming down, they're staying nearby. Um, we put a few hotels up there that people can stay at. So, you know, it's really interesting. We can't wait to see everyone. Obviously, we've had a year now of not really mixing like we were. So it's going to be great. Really looking forward to it. I think everybody's quite excited for it. Yeah. And guys, make sure you do stay with us to the end of the show this evening and don't just hit the fast forward button because Spencer's got a quite a nice little announcement uh, about something we're going to be doing on next Monday's bank holiday show. Uh, including a little, uh, let's call it, we'll call it a little prize giveaway, but we'll come back to that a little bit later. Red Shovel, good evening all. I hope you're well. How are you doing? Um, do you know what's the most interesting watch you bought this week for Spencer? Uh, let's see. Probably um, it's going to be... Um... Let's put you on the spot there. Yeah, know. well, this is all about putting people on the spot. I know, what's the most interesting we've been, watch? We've been buying a lot and part exchanging a lot. Uh, probably uh, it's going to be... Some of the older date just, yeah. I think, yeah. which have been, which we haven't seen. Look, we're seeing loads of new models. So when we get some of the older things, not really vintage, but like a 90s date just, just a bit more interesting, right? Because we're seeing so much of the new stuff. So the older pieces, when they come in a bit worn, then we Yeah, refurb. they're more interesting than the same, you know, 2020 watch, which yeah. is fine, but we like to see different They've got a bit pieces. more character. Um, yeah. As well of things we've sold, um, I had an eighteen, the eighteen carat um, Submariner with a thirty dial. Again, just unusual. You don't see these sort of pieces because they're twenty, twenty five years old. So when you do see them, they're a bit special now. Talking of uh, something a little bit older, let's check out what's on your wrist this week, sure. Spencer. What do you got? Um, this is a five five one three. Um, I just really like it. Show it up it. to your camera. There, there we go. If you can see on the camera there. So it's 5513. I think this is about 19, mid 70s. Just nice with the older bracelet. I mean, people, when they see these, nothing's been done to it. Just amazing. This watch is sort of 45 years 45 old. 45 years old? Yeah. yeah. Wow. Great condition. That's nearly as old as me, Janilda. I know you can't quite believe <laughs> well, it. Uh, quite possibly. You know, the dial, you know, a little bit fading on it where it goes a bit yellow it's just great so it was just something i thought i'd wear for a change that's a watch that you don't want to service or polish no yeah, we that? again these this is saint gavin you'd look at and say well why haven't you cleaned that one up we don't want to clean no. that you one don't want to clean it you want to leave all the dirt as it was all the scratches and just leave it as it is yeah. and janilda i've noticed actually we're on a rolex I'm theme the watch, well guys. forget the watch hold on a second look at your nails oh, yeah, with the I rolex bet. screen <laughs> That's a beautiful effect. What, what are you wearing? wearing is um, the Daytona pre-ceramic white dial. Up to your camera over there. I think, guys, this is the watch that you really want to... That's the 11.65.20. Yeah. Everyone wants that. Yeah. The white dial especially is very popular. So yeah. It's amazing. When that first came out, it was black, black. Everyone thought the black was the piece. Now yeah. on the ceramics is the white, the panda. The white. And yeah. now everyone on those is the white. Same explorers have now become really popular. The white dial has definitely had a bit of a U-turn. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Um, Red Shovel, looking forward to being at the show, traveling all the way from Northern Ireland. Oh, oh that's okay. so nice. Yeah, hopefully you don't have to quarantine or anything like that to come <laughs> in. Uh, Herb Maynard, hi guys. I went to some of the New York City ADs this past weekend. The cupboards were bare. We're hearing that quite a lot, aren't we? Empty mm. cupboards in, uh, mm. in Rolex stores. I guess uh, lockdown and everybody's in a bit of a rush to... Uh, 
to grab hold of their watches. Sure. Yeah. Let's um, let's move on very quickly because we've got a lot to get through this evening. Um, do hang around because later on we're going to be doing, uh, well, as the title of the show says, uh, Rolex shw- uh, Shock s- Box Swap Swap Shop. I don't know. It's a bit of a tongue twister. But anyway, we're going to be putting Spencer and Janilda to the test with some very interesting items uh, that I've managed to procure and bring along. And uh, we're going to see what we can do with, uh, with the guys and that. But for now, we're going to do this week's uh, watch unboxing. James? Ilda, do I think I know what this is? It's, a, this is a brand new box, and I it think... It does It does, doesn't it? I think this is the client that called us on Friday to say that he was sending it in the post. Is that, oh, okay. Maybe I know what you're talking about. We're waiting for this watch, I believe. I've got a deal on with Spencer. Okay. I was right, I knew exactly what it was. Wow. It is. The we Oyster Petrol 41 honestly. in Tiffany Blue. I mean, it's, it is just stunning, isn't it? It is. It's impossible to have. I'm surprised we've here, got it. Like, you know? I feel like I've won some sort of lottery Sometimes having it's it. It's going to be a happy. I know, I can't wait to tell him that it's actually come in. I think the special thing about this has got to be the colours have come out with. It's completely different to anything they've ever done before. And as much as it doesn't have a date. Literally a few days. The craziness for these watches honestly changes every day. Yeah. It goes up and up and up. Yeah, but I think since the beginning, the Tiffany Blue has always been the one. And like, it's always been the hardest to get. Yeah. No matter the, the size, yeah, 100%. Most. I mean, I love it. I think it is stunning. Have you heard there's been talk that they might discontinue this? It might only run for a year, I mean. It might be a very, very short Could you imagine time. the prices of these if that happens? Yeah. It will just be crazy. I think crazy. everyone is going to want to have one and they're going to stop selling them, obviously, yeah. for a while and wait. Yeah. The prices are up and up. Exactly. People are clever. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> exactly. Again, if you want the Tiffany Blue 41, we've got it in stock. We've got other colours, obviously. We have, but yeah. I know that you're after this one, so just give us a Who chance. isn't? <laughs> now, that for sure is one of my favourite watches. I would love to get my hands on one at some point because I think it's absolutely stunning. Is that one of your favourite pieces, Ginoda? I really like the Tiffany blue, but like I said before, I, I prefer the red and the green. Gav, you have to start getting the collection. You need to, it's not only the one, you need to get the whole collection. Well... You know, I was thinking that, um, and we've talked about this in the past, haven't we? To have the set Mm. would be absolutely unbelievable. And uh, all your customers are going to see that on your new uh, mouse mat. So if you get yourself down to the show and you're lucky enough to get a goodie bag. That's the one we're doing. That's with the eight different colours on the mouse mat. Nobody asked me what I'm wearing this week. I think they're worried. Go on. (laughs) This week, guys, I'm back to wearing skin and bone. I forgot. (laughs) I forgot to even get a joke watch this week. That's how good I am. Guys, if you're tuning in, do please pop some questions downstairs um, for us to see. Uh, Don't forget to hit the like, subscribe and share buttons. We're so grateful to everybody who's subscribing to the channel and we love seeing you every week. Um, Steph Milek, evening guys, hope you're all well. Uh, Red Shovel says, stunning OP. We're going to go now to some questions we've had on Instagram. Janilda, I'm going to fire some of these at you, okay? Sure. Um, In fact, some of them are directly to you. Okay. So let's start with, uh, with number one. This is from DJDC81. Tudor, I'm going to say this all wrong. Pelagos, 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 yay or nay? Left handy button. I really like it. I think it's a nice one. I I might like it more than the Black Bay, to be honest. You might like it more Mm. than the Black Bay. Okay. So, excuse me if that is, that's what I Google searched and that's what came up. Uh, It kind of looks like a. Submariner. Submariner, doesn't bit, it? Yeah. It, re- it really but does. it's a very good watch. It's a very nice good watch. One. I'll put you on the spot now, Spencer. Price of that sort of thing? Um, so about three and a half thousand. Yeah. I mean, it's great value, isn't it? Mm. It really is great Sort of value. half that of a sub. I Am mean, I right on that? I, I, I haven't looked oh, so, up. I'm okay. just putting you on the spot. I have no, no idea myself. I'd say uh, in the reason of three and a half thousand. I'll leave the dealing to you. Funnily enough, I did notice that across our Instagram channels, uh, there's been a little bit of chatter across social media about Tudor... Um, having a little announcement. James, perhaps if you can cut to my my, my screen. Uh, Tudor are making an announcement on the 25th. Um, not entirely sure 
what that's going to be. I don't know if it's a new watch or a, a new strap or an. Anyway. They bought some new things out. Well, they, they did, didn't they? Which yeah, seems so quite strange. That was strange like six be... weeks ago. Yeah. Uh, so I'll be curious and interested to... Um, let's see what they say. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. Um, let's go to the next question. This one is from Artisan Curation, who's back again. Ilda, Hi. which is your favourite Submariner? Um, I'm going to go with the Bimetal Blue Sub. You're going to go with the Bimetal Blue Sub. Let's have a little look at those on the screen, please, James. Okay, there was our choices. And Ilda, you've gone for the Bimetal Blue? Uh, yeah. Let's, let's get that up. It's a cool watch. It's a Retail cool watch. Is it? so we, like we did it. have an image, I'm sure, of a bimetal blue sub, but um, uh, um, no, no, let's take that's the black one. That's the black one. Yeah, I'm I pretty like sure. The black it's the same, too. but with the black dial yeah. and black yeah, okay. bezel. That's great. Okay, distant rooster back again. Um, Spencer, this is for you. Three two six nine three eight. Hope three you know two. Yeah. Or 228 238. Two Both three. champagne and why, Spencer? The Sky Ilda. Dweller. Yeah, let's get those up on screen, please, James. 326938 is the Sky Dweller in yellow gold. Yes. Okay. That's the 228. Yeah. And there they both are. Yeah. And the question is, and why? It's just got a bit more going on, I think. The 228238 is a day date. I like day dates, but there's nothing. I prefer sort of, the day date though. Really? So you can have yeah. the sky okay. dweller. Well, again, the day dates are a watch that could be worn by a woman as well. The president bracelet. Yep. I just the... think the sky dweller's just got a bit more going on. I like the way the bezel rotates. First of a rotating diamond cut bezel. Just more we have going some on with nice it. sky dwellers in stock, guys. We've got the rose gold one, the, rose the gold biometal one. one. Nice yep. pieces. So if you are after one. Yeah. I gotta say, Ilda, you don't stop selling. Spencer's <laughs> busy talking about I the need to sell watches, watches guys. You're sell, sell, sell. <laughs> Good girl. We love that. Okay. Uh, this one is our, our throat's open to either of you. By the way, that was obviously one inch. You, you both mm -hmm. preferred one inch. So I hope that answers it for you, Distant Rooster. Uh, Maisie12 asks Why do some Rolexes have the letters LN after the number and what does it mean? Hilda, that's, that's Hilda. your... That's you. Lunette Noir. That's French. Uh, LN is basically uh, the black dial. Uh, sometimes it has the L blue, which is Lunette blue, which is the blue yep. dial. And what would, that's LV, just the color what would of LV be? Vert, which is Very green good. in uh, French. But Hilda, with that, is that not the bezel, not the dial? Because the Daytona is LN yeah, but on the white dial. On the white dial so as well. So be they are the bezels, not the dials. Not the dials. Yes, but if we go four letters, B, L, N, R. Then it's both of them. Yeah, blue so noir, blue black bezel. Correct. But um, on Daytonas, you'll just find that they are... 1165 double And they can LN. be different dials. Yep. Yeah. So he's talking about the, I think it's the bezel. Yeah, I think it's the it bezel. It refers right. to the bezel and not the dial. Okay. Um, right. Let's move on to the next question. Uh, question uh, from Matt underscore Cooley. Spencer, this, or this could be for either of you. Mm -hmm. Explain how a dealer decides the purchase price when they buy a customer's watch. How do you decide? Well, um, we look at the market. We look at what the market's doing. We try not to pay more than the market. So we want to buy a little bit under the market in order that we can sell competitively. And also, Spencer, we look at our stock as well. Mm. That's important. That's it. I think that's really important, actually, to mention because, yeah. uh, I mean, I spend a lot of time with you guys and uh, depending on where you are is what you're paying yeah. for a watch. Yeah? I always sure. say to my customers, I want to give you the best price, but I also have to look at my stock. If I have too many or if I've sure. got... The issue you've got nowadays mm. as well, um, the word Rolex is just a money machine. So anyone can just go and buy something and make money. And that is the case. But now more and more, Rolex are trying to get people to buy what they don't want and dangling that carrot where they're going to say, oh, we'll get you a Daytona or um, a Batgirl. So on these watches, people will make a good profit. So people are willing to buy things and not make a profit or even a small loss in order to make to a large what? profit. Mm -hmm. I mean, Daytona's now are 25, 30,000 pounds. They list at 10, seven. Um, green Daytona's are 60,000 pounds. They list at 31. Platinum's are 55, 60. They're selling at 100. So in order to buy a Datejust or a six, 8,000 pound watch, 
that p- people are more than willing to take a loss in order to get one of the big ticket yeah. items. Yeah. Gary Coburn has uh, has just uh, popped up with, um, I suspect Tudor are going to release a Black Bay in full gold. Oh, that would be interesting. Mm. Uh, that would be interesting. And one of our favourites, Jacob Kendall, is Hi. on with us. Hey, Jacob, how you doing? Cheers, guys. Wearing my 126610LN collected yesterday. He actually DM'd you. I saw you reply to him this morning. That's a great job. Uh, great watch. That man seems to get quite a few watches yeah, from his must, AD, doesn't he? He must be very in. Yeah, it must be really, really in. Okay, let's go to um, the next question, which is uh, from, oh, DJDC81 again. Omega, Omega, Aquaterra 150mm on a rubber strap. Thoughts? Mm, on the Omega, Spencer, I have to say... Are we going to see that? Oh, there it is. Yeah, there. I must say the Aquaterra is not my favourite. Yeah. I really like the Speedmasters when it comes to Omegas, but yeah. it's a nice watch, definitely. The strap is nice and everything. It's a classic. It's yeah. a classic piece. Yeah. It, um, I prefer more You're not, you're not sports, raving about it, the pair of you, so I'll take it as a, as a double like thumbs down. I like more the Seamasters, the Speedmasters. Yeah. That, for me, it's quite a plain watch. Yeah, right. it's a classic. Next question. DJ Sparky 2969. How much are the Rolex Explorer 39mm going for? And hold or sell? Mm. Let's do this discontinued one now. It's a hold. Yeah. Um, I've actually seen the new Explorer 36. The smaller size. It lo- yeah. yeah. It's quite small. I don't understand. It seems very small. It seems a bit like a boy's size. It is a boy's size. Oh, you've seen one yeah, in the flesh the now? One. Yeah. And um, we had one in, didn't we? I can't, yeah. I can't recollect the reference, but um, it's small. Right. Okay. And why the, why that why mm-hmm. they done that? I've no idea. No. No. Idea. Well, we've had this discussion, haven't we, about going smaller, and we think maybe yeah. because um, Asian market's a bit part part of the world, yeah, maybe smaller there's, risk. There's smaller. another part of the world as well. There's, well, there's there's yeah. a whole big another yeah. part of the world. Uh, uh, Gary Coburn again. Hi from Bangor, Northern Ireland. Um, Hi. Oh, let's go. In fact, we'll go to the next question first, so we can get this uh, get this done, and James can relax on the screen. Um, Dan J. Jones, 1991. I think this is um, directed at you, Ilda. Oh, okay. If I come down to the meet and greet, what's the chance oh. of a date <laughs> with Ilda after? Spencer's going to make me work all It's all right. She day, finishes so. at nine, after yeah. nine o'clock. I would, say, I would say you've got more chance of a date with Spencer. <laughs> That's more probable. Uh, to be fair, we've discussed this as well in the past. We think the queue will be longer for Ilda uh-huh. than it will be for any of the watches. So uh-huh. we wish you lots Probably. of luck with that. Now, we mentioned last week on the channel um, that we've been involved with um, looking at the Rolex group on Facebook. And guys, if you haven't seen it, do check it out. It's a thriving group. I think it's got about 36,000 members uh, as of last night. And we've been posting a lot of stuff, a lot of wa- uh, watches, and there's been some really, really uh, interesting photography. And we put out a call on our Instagram and across our YouTube that if people wanted to send in like great watch shots or some watch photography, send it in and we'd, we'd give them a shout out. So uh, we've put this little gallery together. Have a look. Okay, you can't hear that. But if I play it to you, hold on.
So actually, wow. that's the first time you've seen that, guys, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, absolutely. Amazing pictures, what some people come up with. Really. Yeah, so I want to give a big thank you to Dean Nash and Bernadette Gomez, both members of the uh, Rolex group on Facebook, who very kindly um, allowed us to share those. And there's also Frank Pavan as well. Um, and I'll give you a, a nice little shout out. Great images. And people, do send in your watch images. We love watching those. It's amazing. And also our uh, photographer, Yuri, that, those were nice shots. Well, I'm going to take 50 50 responsibility of that because I bought the props. Oh, okay. Yeah, I bought that the Smurf. Idea, I bought the tennis good. balls. Yeah, one other thing we've spoken about is for our viewers, yeah, send in pictures. Yeah. yeah. Guys, send pictures of your collections, of what you've got. Obviously, no cards, no names. We don't want to um, expose any of these. But just what you've got in your collections, whether they're creative photographs or just of what you've got. It's just interesting. We People like have got it, yeah. Daytonas, Datejust, APs, Pateks, all these different things. Yeah, we... But some of those pieces were great that, where they've really gone in. But just... even. Both. We'd like to see all of this, yeah. which we share. I mean, I obviously look through a lot of social media stuff and, and we're going to start getting a bit creative um, with, with, with your sort of Instagram stuff just to have a bit of fun. Yeah. Because, sure. But I have to say, uh, Bernadette and Dean do an amazing job. Great. And and obviously they're working with the watches they have, um, but very, very creative and lots of fun. Um, now, there's another chap who I came across just yesterday. Somebody posted a picture in the group and I thought, Oh my goodness, that's amazing. Uh, perhaps uh, if you can pop that up on screen for us. Look oh, at this. Nice. This is a drawing by Ben Lee, who is at Ink Dial on Instagram. And Ben hand draws wow. watches. I mean, how, how cool is that? That's beautiful. That's it looks fantastic. beautiful, doesn't it? And if you go well, through his Instagram account. Um, well, we're going to be looking for some new stuff for the office. By all means, send things in of what people are drawing. We'll use some of these. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it looks like you just got yourself yeah. a commission, Ben. <laughs> we'll uh, we'll have a few bits and pieces in. Um, now, before we go any further, let's just have a look through our chat and see what's going on. Um, uh, what do you think? This is from, um, I always say this wrong, Diop Trey 75, or it could be D-O-P Trey 75. <laughs> what do you think of the white gold? It says Patel, but I'm assuming that's going to be Patek. Patek. Yeah, the white gold Patek Cal Cal Calatrava five one nine six G. Again, classic watches, not my sort of thing, but I mean, They're always just watches. it's more of a dress watch. Yeah, yeah. We don't see as many of them. Mm. Beautifully made, fantastic watch, but a more a less seen watch. Yeah. Kelvin O, sorry I'm late, guys. Don't be late again. Uh, Spencer, can I be your apprentice? I will work for free. You can educate me in the world of watch trading. <laughs> well, that's very interesting because we've had a few people, haven't we, Hilda? Yeah. Uh, guys who have come in and seen us and been to the office and they turn around to yourself yeah. and they've said, I will work here for nothing. We've yeah, had a number of people who just feel that looking, touching, and just seeing. And the unboxing, look, we're unboxing every day, opening and seeing. We've no idea. The parcels come in and we look at what we've got. Um, not the first person who's mentioned this. <laughs> no, and I have to say, you are busy enough, actually, that you could probably do with about another 15 apprentices. <laughs> yeah, sure. Greggy Boy 76 who said hello to me yesterday on Facebook and introduced himself. He's coming down to the show. He said hello. Evening all. Hi, Greggy Boy. Hope you're doing well. Uh, Matthew Dell says, thanks for answering my question. Um, that's dope, says Rolex. Unless I've missed something, that's all he says. Rolex. Uh, Asif Goldmine, great show. Do you think the... Tiffany Blue OP will continue to rise in 2021. Mm. Not so much, not so much in 2021, but in 2022 when it's discontinued, we'll look at everything now and think, "Oh my God, that was cheap." That's what's going. That's what I, I think. These will be a short production run. I think so. Okay, well that's interesting because that dope's just come back, um, or I probably I should say that's dope, <laughs> um, not any connotations to anything else. Rolex overpriced, overhyped. There are better watches out there. Oh, really? What do you think? Right. Mm. Well, I'll tell you what. Let us know what is there. I actually don't think Rolexes are that expensive for the quality. I mean, when we look back at some of the date just and this sub, for example, this sub's 45 years old. How can you criticize this? That it's 45 year old and it's still working and you can get it serviced, you can get the parts. I mean, there are other good watches, Tudors and Amigas. I agree, fantastic watches. But I don't think a lot of the standard Rolexes are huge money. 
And what do you think, Janina? Yeah, do you think I mean, like the prices must, yeah. of, like for example, Tudor mm-hmm. will catch up one day to maybe somewhere Rolex? Are? Guys, let's be honest. There is a reason why Rolexes are so popular, and is the good quality. The, they're good looking because the looks are important. I think too, there are nice watches, but they're not going to get as popular as the Rolex is. I don't see that happening. But do you feel, Janil, that if you're starting in the watch collection business for yourself, do you think that would you aspire straight away to a Rolex or would you think I'll go in at sort of an entry level and start Personally, building from there? I could start with a Cartier. Why not? A ladies Cartier, a nice Cartier and then go to the Rolexes. But I wouldn't start with a Tudor personally. Spencer, what do you think? It depends what you. It depends whether you're buying for investment or that you want a Rolex. It's like with anything starting out in a property, a car, a watch. It depends how what your pocket can afford, but yeah. it doesn't just have to be because of the money that you buy a Rolex. Yeah, but also, Spence, how many times do we hear customers saying, "I've bought this because I wanted a Rolex"? So yeah, that's the main. It. Everyone P- wants people, that. W- there's so much hype now, all social media, everything, that everyone wants a Rolex. I think that's what that Stoke's saying. Yeah. There's so much hype around There's the whole so thing. much hype. And there are other fantastic watches, They're without question. Amigas, Tudors, they're at Bremont's are very good watches, but they don't control the same sort of hype. You can't go and spend retail money and then get close to your money back. Yeah, no. that's the thing. And is that why perhaps people do buy Rolex? Yeah, well, that, because they know they're not they're not well, going to they're it, not going to bomb. It does drive it a bit more. If you mm. put money in and you know that you're more or less can wear it for 5 years and get a profit on it, it changes your outlook providing you've got the money to buy the piece. Yeah, maybe it just gives you comfort to do it. And yeah. you're absolutely right providing you have the funds to buy a piece. Spencer, this is a question that's been asked by quite a lot of people. And, and through Instagram, um, when we're looking through, we get asked this question quite a lot. Graham Campbell asks, Hi, guys, can you recommend an insurance company for my watches? My home insurance company wants to add a thousand pounds for a year. Obviously, it's, it depends on what mm. you're trying to insure. Well, I've actually just, we, that will be on our website. We've got a link with a company called TH March, who through us, you can insure your watch. So again, it's not done with us, it's through us. Um, we have a code that you that you're referred by BQ Watches. The other thing, which is absolutely key, is not to insure watches. So say, for example, the Daytona that you know is wearing there, yeah. and that might be seven and a half thousand pounds when it was bought. So you might have bought it, got the receipt, sent it to your insurance company, insuring it for seven and a half. That watch is currently in the region of twenty thousand pounds. So it's absolutely key to each year update your valuation. And that's something we're doing. If a watch is bought from us, you can call us and we won't charge you. We'll give you a valuation, an upgraded value. Of how value, much you should. Value. Yeah. But through us, you can inquire. I've no idea the terms, conditions, and some of them, they want your household insurance, but you can certainly speak with them. They're specialist insurers for jewellery and watch. They're called TH March. And they've, they've approached us and said, will you please pass this to your customers. So our customers go through us, they get a code and they go to TH March and get a quote for their for insurance. Psychic Wang Isaacs um, says, when you buy a watch from a private seller, you can never return a watch and it's hard to get a refund. But when you buy from a business seller like BQ, there is a guarantee if you're unhappy. And that's absolutely, absolutely. true for you guys, isn't it? Absolutely. Yeah. I was only speaking with some day. You buy the watch. This guy had bought a watch and he was thinking of buying something for his wife. I said, if you buy it now and pay, if you take it home and your wife doesn't like it, put it in the post, send it back, and we'll refund you in full. Now, here's an interesting question, again, from That's Dope, um, because I think he probably thinks it's a, an uncomfortable one to answer. I, I, I'm hoping it won't be. Dealers buy as low as possible and sell high. Define profit in a percentage. Now, it's not true. It's not true. It's not true. We try and buy at less than what things are selling for, obviously. But whenever we're pricing a watch, if everything is priced at 10,950, at BQ, I'll be 10,750. And if anyone can, if I'm more expensive than anyone else, then I'll adjust my price. On occasions, if something is really hard to get, or you've got a lot of private sellers, sometimes I might be a bit more expensive. But in general, Non, not pricing with privates, but in the marketplace, we'll always try and price to be competitive. And I'd just like to add in, because I'm obviously I'm not involved in your business at all, and I see it from an outside perspective, and I'm learning all the time, but it's almost like profit's a dirty word, but 
you are in business. You mm. have staff, mm. overheads. You're mm. supplying a service. You have come back. There's safety there's for people knowing. There's a lot of work behind There's the a scenes, lot of guys. positives in well, terms of... At times, I always say this, I've asked the staff and the watchmakers and you, Gavin, all to work for nothing, but they all insist True. on getting paid. And so that's why. That's also, why. can I add, when we buy watches, Spencer, it happened in the past that maybe some customers, they didn't even know how much their watch was worth, sure. but we, we, we were honest Absolutely. with them, told them this is a mm. nice watch, might be worth a lot, and they were glad they were... Yeah. Especially when some things are older from the 80s yeah. or 90s. People are, I mean... They don't realise how... The, what was the piece? I, I had the other day a really old precision. The watch was like £120 to, and we paid £2,000 for the watch. Some of the prices of what, you know, and some customers do say, wow, I wish I would have bought 10 of those pieces. Yeah. Yeah. And that's the thing when people have held things. Now, do stay with us, guys. We are going to get up to... Uh, our, our, our little surprise for Spencer and Janilda really in just a minute. But I feel there's quite a few questions coming here that do need dealing with. So I think we'll just get a few through a few more of these and then we'll get to uh, the surprise of tonight's uh, little show. Uh, let's talk trainers. Hi, Spencer. What are you expecting from tomorrow's Tudor release? Could we see a Tudor Submariner or am I dreaming? We, we did talk about that about 20 minutes ago and actually the guys weren't too aware. I know somebody's mentioned a gold... All yellow gold. All yellow gold. I think, black I think they have just bought out. Did they not bring out something in gold? There was something brought out in April. There was a gold head. Yeah, I'm but, sure there yeah, was. Yeah, by metal maybe. I no, it was just a gold. Oh. I think it was about thirteen thousand. Okay. I'm sure someone will tell us on the chat here. Yeah. Um, Gilbert Lloyd Green. Hi guys. Which would you buy on a medium budget? The Batgirl or the new root beer? Well, that's a big medium budget. Mm. Same price. Well, it depends where your budget is. Well, I would my budget go be a lot lower. Root beer. Really? Yeah. Okay. Janeiro goes root beer. I would be a Batman. I actually, yeah, I, w I would be. But Again. they're both great watches and great prices. Have you guys seen the new ones in yet on the Oyster bracelets? Have you had any of those in yet? No, we no. Were, There's an image come through that one may be coming in this week, but I haven't handled it yet. Haven't right. No. It. But don't forget to give me the call. Yep. I want to come in and, uh, and take, take pictures picture. of that. Uh, Raging Rhino, what's your opinion on Olive Dial Day Date Rose Gold, please? Lovely watch. Beautiful. I was actually offered a piece today in white gold we're trying to buy. But the dial's just stunning on it. It really is. Um, the ro I'd say the rose probably better than the white, but both very, very yeah, nice. Yeah, the rose is Lee Hancock says, Evening, everyone. My AD sells Rolex and Tudor. I was very lucky. They took my Tudor GMT in mint condition, 15 months old, gave me full price back and sold me a now discontinued black dial Explorer 2. That's a nice one. Yeah. Yeah. What do they do when they buy back those watches typically in AD? Do they, they probably go somewhere else. A lot they? of these ADs, that, well, saying that, um, we deal with quite a few ADs who ask us prices and we get the watches. So they may have done that. So Lee's asking, to, do you think that was a good move? Absolutely. If he, I mean, he's got a he fantastic got the watch. He got watch that he wants. Yeah. 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 Uh, Greggy Boy 76 uh, the thing people miss is that when prices rise, profit margins do not necessarily increase. So dealers are having to invest far more money to make the same margins. Oh, without question. That's correct. That's a sensible uh, sensible little comment there. We like that. Uh, Pradeep Singh, will my white dial 5711 reach 100K mm -hmm. now that the olive dial are trading for 200K plus? I think, of it. I think eventually. I yeah. mean, the blues have been 60, 70. They are listed as high as 90,000. I think it's only, again... As time goes on and there's less of these pieces around without question, especially if it, if there's something special where it really is a mint piece. Uh, Jimmy um, says, do you guys ship to America? We do. Of course. I've yes. been asked that about five times on yeah. Instagram. In the but people days. have to pay the costs or the duty. Um, we'll ship anywhere. Anywhere. But people just must be aware and it's worth inquiring before we put the wheels in motion to ship something. It will cost. Yeah. Gary Coburn uh, just pops in with, I can't believe that some people are prepared to pay huge money for watches from a stranger on Facebook, yet complain about dealers charging a bit more. That's very valid, isn't it? Mm. That's a good point. And then, yeah. and then when there's a problem with it, where's the person on Facebook when the account's disappeared? Yeah. Yeah. Now, everyone, I wanted to have a bit of fun with Spencer, and it's down to me as the producer to come up with some ideas uh, during the show and for the next week's show. 
And usually, as happened tonight, Spencer walks in at six minutes before we're starting <laughs> because he's been down to the shop to get a packet of crisps and a drink and says, what are we doing tonight? So I asked Spencer and Janilda to bring in three watches, okay? I asked them to bring in three watches in various different price ranges. Now, I'm just going to move my little iPad out of the way here. And the idea of this little game is I want to know, will they swap one for mm -hmm. what's in the box? So first off, seeing as we're all being very, very trendy um, with uh, what goes on in the world, I'm going to open up this box. First of all, would you like to feel that? Have a little feel. Spencer, have a little feel. It's not heavy. It's definitely not very heavy. <laughs> it's not okay. heavy. No. Nope. Okay. Now, we've oh. been talking a lot in recent weeks, haven't we, about the, the interesting sort of differences and, and similarities between that in the trainer market and that oh. of watches. So, Spencer, what's the cheapest watch you have there? They just... Yes. Okay, Spencer. So I am going to bring out this pair. I'm going to handle them very, very carefully. <laughs> this is a nightmare because I know Ve nothing. Right. Give you a clue. They have gold paper in. Now, these are a pair of Nike SB Concept Holy Grails. Okay. And I'm going to ask you, what have you got there? What's your cheapest watch? 7850. Show it up date to the camera. Just. A date just 7850. Okay. And what's that price at? One, that's a 126. That's a one two six two three four. That is a thirty six mil date just. Okay. Yeah, so I'm basically going to ask you, Spencer. I'm going to put you on the spot and ask you: Do you think it would be a good trade to swap your watch, valued at circa eight thousand pounds, for this? Are they a pair? Because they're different colours. They are different colours, but that's the idea. If you look at the bottoms of the soles as well, but they are. Hilda, you got to help me out here. We know nothing about trade. Pander them very, very carefully. I was asked to wear gloves, but I decided. Actually, I forgot. Um, so don't put your hands I on them. I hope they're clean. But uh, they're, they've never been worn. I think they got taken out of a safe <laughs> today. They they're, they're kept mm. in a safe like your watches. I mean, if you can see the shimmer on them, they're pretty special. So my question to you, don't drop it, Spencer, whatever you do. These, I'm I not going to say these are more precious than your watches, but... I know a little bit what's going on with trainers. You do? With okay. With Jordans, you know, I've heard, but... Okay. You're comparing it with a Rolex, so I'm a little bit... Okay, so Spencer, confused. I'm going to put you on the spot and I'm going to say, would you swap this pair of chainers for your cheapest watch over there? Hold up the watch. Spencer, they're shinier than your Rolex, so <laughs> think <Okay>. about it. <laughs> Meanwhile, half the world is probably Googling what these, uh, these trainers <laughs> may be worth. Do you know what I'm going to say yes. You're going to say yes. Okay, so can we swap, please? Can I we swap? I think that's risky. Go i got to really? tell you. Yes, yeah, swap. I will take the watch. Okay. Go you on. take the trainers. You'll see how I bad think a we've trader done a I am. Okay. Spencer, I thought that was unbelievably brave for your first trade. <laughs> okay. You've just swapped an 8,000 8, pounds? 8,000 yeah. pound watch for an 800 pound pair of <gasps> trainers. Okay. So I, I, I am It just shows you I know in. nothing about them. <laughs> I am quids in so far. Now, let's get to the next watch. What's the next one? Yeah. Starbucks. Starbucks. Okay, so we have a Starbucks, and a Starbucks is worth roughly... 15,000. 15, so hang on. 15,000. You, you bought these to be something really special. Well, you got mugged into it. It's not my <laughs> fault. Um, it's just how you sell it, Spencer. But on the basis of that, okay. I'm going to offer you a swap, okay? Okay. So the swap I'm going to do for you is this. Now, Spencer knows I'm a bit of a superhero fan, Okay. And I managed to get hold of these. These are unbelievably special. This is a, a 1979, as you can see, still sealed and kept in this packet, a 1979 Star Wars annual number one. Not only do I have number one, but I have the Star Wars annual number two, and I have the Star Wars annual number three. Okay, so I have three Star Wars annuals. Okay, okay. one, two, and three, all original before Star Wars, well, as and when Star Wars sort of came out. On top of that, I'm going to throw in, Spencer, the Superman gallery signed by the world-famous Neil Adams, who was the artist who basically oh, created and okay. drew all the Superman stuff, okay? All authenticated with certification. There is four magazines here, and I'm going to ask you, <laughs> would you swap it for your Starbucks? Bearing in mind, you've just done the worst trade in the world there. <laughs> Would you, would you swap this time? <laughs> Hilda, what do you think? We're not going to trade this time. No? You're not going to trade this time? Are you sure? <laughs> no. <laughs> if yeah, you're not going to trade this time, I'm going to sweeten the deal a little bit. Go on then. Okay. okay. <clears throat> I have here a Coca-Cola can. Right. And a Diet Coke. Sorry, a Coca-Cola can and a Diet Coke can. And I'm going to ask you, 
if I throw in those two cans of Coke, would you now swap? By the way, I'm going to I'm going to give you a bit more background. I paid a pound for these each last week. Right. right. OK, I paid a pound, but there's something very special about them. Have a little look. Be, be very, very careful because it's more than my uh, life is worth. Be very careful. You might want to look on the bottom. Okay, so... Oh, they're signed. They're signed. Now, you probably can't see that, but these are signed by a world-famous artist, okay, called okay. Damien Hurst. Okay. Up, really? Now, I'll give you a little bit of background. You remember how Banksy's done it in the past? Yeah, sure. He set yeah. up a gallery, put up pictures for a quid, everybody's popped along and bought them. I went, I was given a little heads up, and I went to an art gallery last week where Damien Hurst was having an exhibition. And quietly placed in the corner was a Coca-Cola machine with a security guard not too far away telling people, no, 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 the Coke machine's not part of the exhibition. But when you put your pound in and you get your Coke cans, they're signed by Damien Hurst. Oh. All of them. All the ones that were in there. And by the way, you couldn't go and buy all 100 exactly cans, clearly. That's why there's a security guard. So I'm now offering you four Star yep, Wars done. magazines. Hilda, we're going... Let's Fine. go. Let's we try. love gambling. You love Come gambling. On. So, Spencer, you'll take the magazines. You're not giving the work. Be very careful with these, by the way. Not be so very careful be with very our careful. Starbucks. Yep. Okay. <laughs> We're okay here, Hilda. Pass me the watch. I don't know. We're okay. Be careful. Be okay, careful. Be careful. Be careful. Sure. be careful. Be careful. Don't dent my cans. They're yours now, actually. Can you I can, drink you, it? You can dent them. Oh, well, I'll, I'll, I'll Spencer. <laughs> they belong to him now. Spencer, that's a beautiful watch. I'm going to wear that forevermore. I'm going to tell you now that each of your Star Wars magazines are worth $15 each. And as I said, your Coke cans I paid £1 for last week, and they're selling on eBay for 165 quid. I am properly That's smashing it here I tonight. So we have, now, we have not done very well. You have not done James, very well. James, cut the show. We've not done well. <laughs> I'm so glad he's in. <laughs> I've left the best till last. Shut up. Okay. £15. Pound. That's all these are. Yeah, can you believe it? I bought those years ago thinking they're going to be worth thousands of pounds. They're worth literally $10, $15, maybe $50, okay. but you, you've done your right. brains on this trade so okay. far. Janilda, please take off. Oh, no. I want the special one. <laughs> I've saved the best till last. Please take so Gavin's off. got two watches. I can so take far. it off, but I need to say yes to the. Show it to the camera, okay. Spencer. Tell everybody what we've got. Your camera's on the left there. So here we have an eleven sixty five twenty white dial Daytona. Okay, um, current I value. Think it's about. It's from about two thousand nine, two thousand around twenty one thousand. Around twenty one thousand. I've, 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 I said I left the best till last. You might have to really ponder this one. Give me one second. We're gonna say no. All right. Okay. okay. Do you know Are you really gonna say no? <laughs> James, we're in a mess here. Okay, I'm going to bring this out. Okay. This, I'm sure, is iconic and everybody knows what this is. Okay, Janelle, did you know what that is? And Andy, no. Andy no. Warhol, no. 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 I don't know. Spencer, do you know what this is? No. Rolling Stones, no. Rolling yes, Stones. it's the Rolling Stones. 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 Okay, so I'm going to tell you what this is. In the 1960s, this chap here, uh, John Pash, designed the Rolling Stones iconic yeah. logo, okay? This was painted last year by John Pash, who's in his 90s, okay? okay. 90s. He's in his 90s. It was painted by, hand-painted. It was signed by him, by him, and it's number three of 10 in the world, okay? It's number three of 10 in the world. Now, I'm asking you, will you swap this? Healed up. I've no. made two bad, okay. i made two bad decisions. It's my turn now. I'm going to keep the Daytona. You're going to keep the Daytona? Mm -hmm. It's a mistake. Okay. Well, I'll just give you a little clue. You could have swapped all your watches oh, for this. Oh, no. And big quid, quids in. Go on. No way. Nearly. No, no, not quite. Not quite. Go on. It's been valued at £40,000. So it's not quite all the way. So no. Hold on a second. I would have got some of my money back. You would have got some of your money back. But actually, you've kicked... I'm going to give you one last chance. But at least we've got a what? I'm going to give you one last chance, okay? Because I really want that. Okay. <laughs> okay. I know I've got two great watches, but I really want that. I have something round my neck I want to offer you. Okay. What's see you got here? I want to offer you this. I don't know if you can see that. I've had it on my neck the whole time. It's like having the, maybe the most expensive piece of jewellery I've ever had around my neck. I'm just going to get my little notes up here because I've actually got to remember exactly what it's I'm USB doing. a USB stick. So this is actually, yeah, it pretty much looks like a USB stick, yeah. okay? I mean, it's really lovely. Um it's lovely. It's got a little digital reader on it, but okay. it, but it's just a USB stick yeah. intrinsically. Probably, probably pretty worthless, one would say. 
Oh, let me just take out my laptop because... You've got some cryptocurrency on it. Well, Spencer, that's interesting you should say that because at the moment, I'm just telling you it's a USB stick, okay? Let me turn okay. my laptop around. Are you prepared to swap the Daytona? Hilda, up. I've made bad decisions, so it's over to you. For a USB? I'm telling you there's crypto on that that's... James, what's happening? He can't give any advice. What do you think? <laughs> I'm going to swap you a little USB. Probably costs about a pound for your Rolex Daytona. Bearing in mind, I've done the best deals of the day so far. Fine, do let's think? do it. We love part exchanges. Yes, you love part exchanges? <laughs> okay. Pass You're me. the one who said no Pass to the painting. The no, now. But then the painting... <sighs> okay. Remember how I said, don't drop the painting, don't drop everything else? Pass me the watch. We'll swap. Okay. Can I drop this? Well, you can drop it. It won't break. But what you are holding there okay. is basically, you're absolutely right, Spencer. It's a USB key that I have borrowed. Well, my life is on the line here, should Go you on. lose that. Go on. That has three, just three, uh -huh. three Bitcoins on it. Well, current, they've crashed at the moment. Well, they bounced off the bottom because I just did a bit quick sum. That is basically $112,000 of Bitcoin at today's price, just before we came so on the show. 112, that is 140 pound, 14, 20, uh, it's about eighty-five thousand. Eighty-five thousand so pounds. We're good. So we're okay. So, so I think ultimately. <laughs> Here, let me touch it. I just got feed okay. it. James, we've done it. That's great. So you've ended up so with. with, with so you've ended up now. with a pair of trainers, two cans of coke, four rubbishy magazines, and some bitcoin. And some bitcoin. We better get rid of them before tomorrow morning. Exactly. <laughs> you better do because you never know. And I mean, I'm, we are looking into this at the moment. I mentioned to you, Gavin. You did, didn't yeah. you? Yeah. We've got a lot of people. Asking asking about, yeah. I mean, yeah, asking where is it now then? Bitcoin? So when I said I had no no watch on it's because I knew one of you would sell That's me one of the watches. <laughs> That's too small. It's in a girl's size. I'm actually going to wear the... Uh, so where are Bitcoin gone to? Uh, I think they're roughly trading at 37,000. Yeah, 37,500. That's when I looked at it. It was a... Was it 56? Or oh, I think it was just 60 short. 60. Plus. Oh, look, James is putting up the... Uh, He's putting up some sort of Bitcoin equation. They're worth twenty six thousand pounds. Yeah, so you've got some like you know seventy eight thousand pounds there. All right. So, so, hold on okay. to so actually, in the end, we're ahead. You double down like you do in every casino, <laughs> and, and you did absolutely fine. So well Fantastic. done, you. And I have to say, uh, it's not my money, so you're more than welcome to keep it. <laughs> and Spencer, I will probably trade all my cans back and my magazines back <laughs> for for the for the rubbish you wash at the end, which isn't actually that rubbish. Uh, I hope everybody enjoyed that. I'll find up some um, some more ways to stitch Spencer up at another time. <laughs> Um, right, let's go back to some of the questions. Um, I really enjoyed that, funnily enough. That was. I was really looking forward to that. <laughs> um, let's have a look. Um, uh, where are we? Tim Blackford, good evening. Do you see the 31 mm millimeter date just 27874 Jubilee stainless steel white gold bezel with mint green dial becoming popular or sought after? 100%. I All think of it's the, the dial. Yeah. It's nice. Yeah. I think the dial's, you know. The green looks amazing. It's like with anything. Anything green, blue, yeah. colours, without question. Oh, good. Uh, Matt Cooley, 2001. Um, I think, actually, Matt, we've answered your question already earlier on in the show, but just for the sake of good order, I'm going to read it out anyway. Can Spencer tell us how dealers decide how much to pay customers yeah, for their watch? We covered that. We covered that a bit earlier. Basically, they check the market, see what's going on, and, uh, and they decide a price from there. Uh, Paul Oakley, good evening, guys. Great show. How is the watch fair looking fully booked? It's filling up. I mean, we've got over 300 people. We're organising. We're org organising some giveaways, the mouse mats, caps, um, drinks for everyone. I mean, it's going to be a really, really fun couple of days. Uh, I know we're going to be doing a uh, an Instagram live. We're going to be in a YouTube live. Paul Thorpe's obviously joining us as well for... Uh, you got an announcement, haven't we? Uh, yeah. Um, well... We're going to come to that right at the we'll very let, end. We'll we, let them know. we have got yeah. an announcement today, but there's something very, very special happening about three o'clock in the afternoon on the Saturday, and and you won't want to miss our lives from there. Um, but for that, we're going to give you a bit more detail at the end of the show, and then next week on our bank holiday special, and it's a bank holiday, so we're not recording. Uh, we're recording, not going live next week. Um, we're going to give you all the details of something very, very special that uh, Spencer is sure. is doing. Um, Question is, whose trainers are they? Well, can you believe this 50-year-old Sado actually owns those trainers? I bought them in New York in a place called Fight Club uh, many years ago. I liked them. I, I've always liked trainers. <laughs> and I've just bought a little pair, which I thought might spoof Spencer into parting with a watch. And They're it served cool. its purpose because <laughs> I own those and I got a watch for it. I own the comics and I got a watch for it. Yeah, but and, I don't, and I don't own the crypto. Oh. 
and the person who does is going to get a, a, a Rolex for it and he's going <laughs> to come and smash me up, I would imagine. Um, hi, guys. What is better value for money? Paying 2K over retail, uh, retail for a 124-300 OP or buying the white dial Omega Seamaster and the Aquaterra green dial with 30% off retail? Mm. That's interesting. You've got to buy what you like and then... How it unravels, it unravels. I mean, I would say the OP myself. Yeah, if you want to think of what you're going to sell easily in the future, then the OP. If you like the Omega, just go for yeah. the Omega. I mean, value, you're going to get 30% two pieces. 30% is, yeah, is good. It's very good. Yeah. Now, here's a question that I know you won't be able to answer on the spot, but I'm sure it's something that we can get back to David Manton on uh, in the next couple of days. How much would you pay for a 2018 Gerard Perigo Loretto, 42 millimeter blue dial 2018. I'll be totally honest, I don't know the no. watch. No, we have don't know to watch. look into it. I don't know the watch. Yeah. Um, we James, maybe we want to check in call tomorrow or have a look, but it's not one that I've. Yeah. But the thing is, like I see it, when you get watches in and you perhaps don't come across them often, you will look it up, go and research it, and you'll come up with a price we to come. offer of course, the price, yeah. or we give people, or sometimes. I'll come up with the price or customers come to me with the price of what they'll be offered and I'll clearly say, you know, go and get the money. Yeah. There's a saying I use quite often when I think someone's been quoted a price that I think is unbelievable. Go and put your trainers on and run as fast <laughs> as you can and take that bid. Be careful with my yeah. trainers, you. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. It's the first time they've been is out that, of the well, box. Well, we got up. Oh, there it is. Wow. Gerard Perigo Loretto. Okay. I've never seen that. Just scroll up there. What's the price under that? Looks a little bit like an AP. Eight and a half thousand far fetch. Uh. That's possibly. It looks like there's some different sizes there. Yep, we'll have it's a, a nice look. Looks nice. Yeah, yeah, it looks nice. Yeah, it looks nice. Yeah, it's a nice. It look like um AP. AP. Yeah. Yeah. Um, John Smith, what will give me a greater return? Over the next 20 years, here's like, who's going to win the premiership next season? <laughs> um, a day date, sorry, a no date or a date submariner? Um, date submariner, probably. Probably a date. If but there we again, can guess. There again, it depends on, as I say, economics with these things, supply and demand. Yeah. <clears throat> if there aren't that many of the non-dates about. The date, non-date may be the one, I mean, put it this way, the non-date has made up massive ground in the last five. Years ago, whenever you saw a non-date, pre-sort of mobile, for everyone oh, couldn't afford the date. It wasn't wanted. Now people love the symmetry, yeah, like no it. date bubble. So it's gained massive momentum, massive. Yeah. I have to say, um, and maybe it's a growing up thing and maybe it's, uh, you know, because I've been working with you guys. I, I, I never, ever looked at Rolex watches prior to, to oh, it was just never for me. And I have to say now, a no date Submariner, in fact, Rolex across the board, but a no date Submariner I think is really classy, really nice. It's really, really nice. Really nice, yeah. clean lines. It's clean, well. exactly. Yeah. The date bubbles have definitely, um, people like it without now. Yeah. yeah. So. Matt Cooley 2001 asks, will Rolex sports models ever return to being shop window watches or have those days gone forever? I can't answer. I just... I can't see them coming back. The way it is at the moment, unless they produce a lot more. But again, it's because of the limited supply that drives the price yeah. up. That's exactly right. I mean, I was talking to somebody the other day who said to me that he, I don't know if he works behind the scenes somewhere at an AD, but he said to me that in the UK, they really messed up at the Rolex ADs by not ordering the coloured OPs. They thought the British public would be far more conservative and they ordered a lot more of the darker faces mm. rather than the yellows, the reds and the turquoises. And when they realised their mistake, it was too late to go in and reorder. Yeah. Yeah. And, I, and I guess that's the squeeze on supply, isn't yeah. it here? Yeah, yeah, yeah it really is. Um, Raging Rhino. Do you have a private collection, either of you? And if so, what is your best watch? And do you have a grail that you aspire to? I Janilda. don't have a private collection. Spencer, my dear. I, I have a number of pieces. What would I, More the vintage, more the unusual things. We need um, a picture of your collection, Spencer. Yes. Okay. That might be oh. an idea. Just open the big safe and yeah. we'll see it. <laughs> and by the way, uh, anybody that follows this channel will know that Spencer's holy grail watch is... Platinum Daytona. Daytona. Platinum Daytona. Yeah. And you sold one last week, yeah, didn't you? Last week, you didn't keep it for yourself. I've got one, but we did ah, sell one. Yeah, you've got one. one. 
Yeah. Okay, I should have got that on the show and swapped <laughs> it for a pair of rubbishy trainers. Um, okay, that's dope. Can you see these Rolex prices being sustainable long term? And also, do you think there will be a lot of disappointment, disappointed, angry people when they realise their Rolex isn't worth nowhere, nowhere the amount paid? I feel like that dope is a bit negative on Rolex, so is it- which is okay. He's not a big fan, is he? <laughs> Can you see the prices being sustainable long term? Well, it's supply and demand, isn't it? Absolutely. It's economics. This is what I say the whole time. As long as people want them and we're selling them and there's demand, that's what's holding the prices up. Yeah, it's not It's not you guys. No. If you guys were just holding the prices there it's and nobody all, was buying It's them. all you guys who are holding the prices up yeah. because you want them and yeah. there aren't enough made to go around. Yeah. Now, Spencer, without giving too much away, why don't you tell everybody to your camera um, why they should tune in uh, next week without giving too much away? Okay, without giving too much away. You know, I'm not very good at this. Basically, we've been thinking long and hard, and obviously all you guys coming to show. So we have got a giveaway that we're giving away completely free of charge, and we will Right, stop. Don't say any more. Be announcing next week. Yes. So uh, It's going to be a nice surprise, guys. It's going to be a really nice surprise. We've worked really long and hard. Spencer has. Uh, everybody in the office has pitched in as to what they think uh, it should be. That's going to be announced next week. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. Set all your notifications because you will not want to miss next Monday at 7 o'clock for this special show that's going to be going out. Uh, before I sign over back to Spencer, just to say, if you do have any nice images of your watch collection, please do share it with us via Instagram channel. Uh, you can always find me somewhere on social media and um, we'd love to see your images. We'd love to feature you on the show. Also, do check out the Rolex group on Facebook. Uh, it's growing 36,000 subscribers. I know we, we've we given it a little push. Um, we have, we're have we really kind of like enjoying the group and all the interaction. We've been posting uh, our yeah. watches. We've been interacting with people, answering questions, really getting friendly with everybody. Some great people on there. So, you know, do check it out, the Rolex group on Facebook. Spencer, it's that time again. Wow. Can't believe how quick it goes. Okay, guys, what can I say? Thank you for joining us again, and we hope to see you next week. Thank you.